Hey guys, welcome back to the Homestead Adventure. Today I'm going to show you how to harvest and dry ashwagandha. Now, ashwagandha is an aptogenic herb. It is an ancient Ayurvedic herb used for so many different things. It can help reduce anxiety and stress, um, improve your sleep, increase your libido. Um, it even has some anti-cancer properties. Um, helps lower blood sugar and cortisol levels and just so many different health benefits of ashwagandha and that is why I love growing it. So I am going to start by showing you how to know when your ashwagandha is ripe. So before we get started I want to mention that I live in zone 5 in Wisconsin and ashwagandha is a warm weather plant and you can grow it as an annual here and it can be grown as perennials in subtropical climates um, but for me i'm growing as an annual and it got really cold last night so my plants are dying so i figured i've got to get out here and harvest today but i'm going to show you what it looks like what you're looking for when you know when it's ripe so you know your ashwagandha is ripe when the husks on the berries turn brown. And I'm going to show you what the berry looks like. And then this is the berry inside. And if you squeeze it, you can see all these seeds. And I'm actually going to save these berries so I can save the seeds and plant again next year. And to do that, you just kind of dry the berries and I'm going to dry them with the root. So like I said, um, these started to die because of the cold. They're not dead, but all of the husks weren't quite dry yet, but that's okay. Um, as long as there's a few and I was going to wait a little bit longer, but since it's getting cold, I am going to harvest these now. So what we are saving on the ashwagandha plant is actually the root. So I'm going to take my shovel here and just dig up the root and I'm going to do it very gently because you don't want to rip out any of the root or damage the root. So I'm just going to kind of like lift up the soil around the plant and then kind of shake the plant and try to uh, lift it out gently. You can use like a hand tool for this that might work better. Um, but as I said in another video, I am so unorganized and that's this week's project is getting organized. Alright, so I'm going to gently lift this out. So I'm going to lift this out as gently as I can. I'm going to just kind of push the dirt to the side and try not to break any of the roots. Oh. Might have just broke some, but this is a good plant here. Here are the roots. That's a good one. So I just harvested one, and now Cosmo Kramer thinks it's his litter box. So I went ahead and I harvested all of my ashwagandha today, and the next thing we're doing, going to do is chop off the root balls. So now I'm going to take some pruners. And I'm going to chop off these rip balls here. It probably would work better with whoppers, the, the longer handled ones. Guess what happened? Lost those two. Just had them last week. But this works just fine anyway. So we got a rip ball here. Uh, I'm gonna put these aside and then take the berries off in just a little bit here. So here is my ashwagandha harvest. Looks pretty good. So the next thing we're gonna do is rinse these off. So I'm gonna start the rinse outside just to kind of get as much of the dirt off as I can and then I'm going to continue the rinse in the kitchen. 
get as much dirt off as we can out here so I don't have a bunch of dirt going down this kitchen sink. Okay. So I got most of the dirt rinsed off out here. Now I'm going to take these inside and finish the process. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a root ball and I'm going to start cutting off all the little parts. And then I'm going to rinse these again once they're all off. And we're just going to do that with all of them. Just chop off all the little pieces. We're saving all of this, by the way. Don't throw any of it out. It's all good. Unless there are any rotten pieces, of course, you're going to want to throw that out. And I'm actually going to take my pruners and continue taking some of this off. Very hard to cut. And these are good pieces, so I'm actually going to save these and just continue the wash on those. All of this root is gold. You want to save whatever you can. It's such a beautiful, beautiful herb. And I don't want to waste any of it. The goal here is just to get it all cleaned up. That's all we're doing here. All right, so I'm gonna keep this like this for now and rinse it and then see if I need to cut it a little bit more after that. So now that I've got all of these chopped up, um, I'm going to give it another rinse and then I'm going to chop them even further into one inch pieces. Okay, so now I've got these all rinsed and I'm going to cut them into one inch pieces. And the root balls, I'm actually gonna cut into smaller pieces, probably one inch pieces as well, and rinse these again. But these ones shouldn't need another rinse. So I'm gonna take these smaller pieces and just chop them up into one inch pieces and make sure you're checking for any um, any bad pieces like right here it's a little soft and just gonna cut that off okay so now I have my one inch pieces on here and I still got these root balls in here and I'm going to cut these into smaller pieces and probably give it another rinse. So I'm just going to take my pruners because they're a little tough to try and cut them with a knife. I'm going to chop them into one inch pieces here. The smaller parts of the root are actually pretty tender. It's just these root balls that are really tough and thick. So now I've cut the root balls into more manageable pieces and now I'm gonna rinse these again and put it with all the other pieces. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay these out on this tablecloth. I do not have a screen which is the preferable method and you also should be putting these outside to dry in the sun or partial shade, but since it's cold outside, I am not going to do that. So this should dry them just fine, um, but I'm also going to make sure that I'm coming in here 
every day and mixing them up a couple times a day, two to three times a day, just to make sure that it gets some airflow. So I'm just gonna spread it out on a single layer and gonna let them dry for a few days up to a week just to make sure that it's all dry before I store it or do anything with it. So I'm just gonna leave them in here in my dining room because that's the only spot I have right now. Um, if you have some sort of a screen, even like a window screen, that is a good way to do it. That way it gets the airflow on the bottom. But as long as I'm mixing these up a couple times a day, they should dry just fine. And I'm even gonna put a fan in here to help the process. So we're just gonna leave it for a couple days here. So what I'm doing to save the seeds is I'm just pulling off the whole husk and I am just going to leave them in the husk for a few days while I leave them to dry just because the berries are very squishy so I don't want to squish them all trying to get them out of there and it'll just help to loosen up the husk by leaving it for a few days. You don't want the green ones, just the red ones. Now I do want to mention the berries are edible, but they are not tasty. So the only reason why I'm saving these is to save the seeds for planting next year. So I've had the ashwagandha drying for about a week. It's all dry now. As you can see, it just breaks. And we're gonna put them in a jar. And I don't, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with it yet. I'm either going to make a tincture or a powder. As you can see over here, I still got the, um, the berries drying so I can save the seeds. And basically I'm gonna be taking them out of their husks as they dry and let them dry a little bit more because they are still a bit squishy. So now the berries are dry and I'm going to take them out of their husk and I'm going to store these in a jar. And if you break them open, like this one here, you'll see all those little seeds inside. And that is what I will be planting next spring. So here is the harvest. I am hoping to get my jars organized. I have some larger jars in the basement and I always end up putting my herbs in two separate jars because I am so unorganized. Anyway, this is what we got from those plants that we harvested. I think I'm going to make a tincture out of these, either a tincture or a powder. So I'm really excited to try that and share another video with you guys on how to do that. But I am I'm just over the moon that I could even grow these in Wisconsin. So that there's proof for you. You can grow ashwagandha anywhere. Um, I just grew it as an annual here because it will not survive a winter and we still got a beautiful harvest. So, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next adventure. Bye guys. I'm my own medicine man. I love making my own medicine. I love, I love you. Mm, mm, mm.